Hello, everyone. Just want to say a quick hello here on YouTube. I'm doing this drawing right now, and uh, I figured I'd just come on and go live for a couple of minutes here and, and have a little fun with you all. I know I gave you all late notice, but uh, let's, um, let's draw a little bit, okay? <laughs> I have a weird setup right now. My reference is, feels like it's like a million miles away over there. I haven't done this in a while. I've been doing a lot of Zoom stuff on my screen, so this is a little, <laughs> it's a little strange right now, but let, let's draw. So what you see here on the screen is, um, I kinda had to cover up the reference. Obviously it's a figure drawing and I didn't wanna go, you know, all out full nude. Nudity doesn't, uh, YouTube doesn't really like that. And uh, let me make sure, I'm just gonna lower this music for a second so I can hear myself think. Uh, yeah, hey Phoenix, how are you, brother? Uh, I just want to come on for a little bit and, and say hello and, and, and draw a little bit. So uh, let's lay the table here. So I'm using a very thin pencil. It's um, crimson red, something different. And it's on the Strathmore Tone Tan paper. Uh, nothing special at all. Uh, I don't really draw with a very thin pencil, but I got to admit it, it's, uh, it's, it's really fun. I have um, some drawings right back over there that I'm going to go get in a second. One second. So this one, I don't know how far along this drawing is, if it's half done, three quarters done, a, a quarter done. I'm just going to kind of work on this for many hours. Hey, Chris. Um, yeah, cool. So this is kind of what I'm going for in terms of a look and feel. Now, when you look at these drawings in my studio, my God, they're so much darker than what you see on, on the monitor. If I was to shut this light, one second. I'm sorry, I'm getting my head in here. Let me let me shut this light for a moment. That actually looks a whole lot better. That actually looks better. Wow. It's still much, 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 much darker in my studio than what you see on the monitor. Uh, the reds, this, with this pencil, you get a really deep, rich red. I just don't understand why my camera is not picking it up. I'm going to shut another light off. I'll be drawing here in the dark here in a minute. <laughs> hey, Jethro, what's going on, brother? Um, yeah, that's all right right there. It's still not kind of true to um, what it looks like, but it is what it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to draw a little bit here in the dark with some natural light and see what that does for me. So this one actually looks not bad now. I think my camera's taking a moment here to adjust. I'm sorry, like I said, I, I have all... Hey, Terria. Welcome. I have all you, your comments over here. And so I, um, yeah, I got this microphone in front of my face. So I'm going to see, this is just really thin paper. It's the Strathmore tone tan paper, but I absolutely love this paper. Like it takes the white charcoal pencil so well. It's unbelievable. Let me tape this right here. Cool. And, um, yeah, I feel like I'm drawing in the dark now. This is this is great. All right, so live stream stuff. So what I'm doing is just m most of it is, is really drawn already. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to draw this leg. I, I kind of want to. Hey, David, you got it. Uh, I can't pronounce your name. Pod Jovi. Yeah, I appreciate you joining me here. So I, I kind of want to do something a little different here. I know I'm talking a lot. I'm not really drawing. I'm just trying to set this up. Uh, and then I'll just kind of dive in and draw. So I, I want this thing to be semi unfinished. I, I don't want to like finish it 100%, but I did want to do a full figure, so to speak. So over here, this is kind of how I would do my gesture where I do um, opposite letter C, letter C. This is called a target, a target, a target. I haven't quite, and, my, and that's off the video camera right there. I haven't quite decided um, that foot's kind of much, much lower, and I haven't quite decided if I want to incorporate that whole thing. Um, Phoenix, this is coming through pretty good for you, right? David, this is coming through pretty good for you in terms of my sound and, and the actual video. Just give me a thumbs up or a quick comment would be really, really uh, awesome if you can do that. Um, so where am I going to go with this? I think uh, let's just draw a little bit up here. And so this is this is a really super duper slow, slow process. 
And a lot of people um, have been asking me about my rendering process. And, and you can see what I'm doing over here. This is really so, it probably doesn't even look like I'm doing much of anything at all. Um, I'm just doing like this circular motion and I'm wrapping around, wrapping around. With this arm, I kind of want to keep it a little bit more unfinished. Hopefully my head isn't in there. So this is a slow process. All right. Thank you, Zero Bunny. Yeah, everything is good. Nacer, David. Okay. Uh, yep. Everything is fine. Awesome sauce. Okay. And uh, so now what I'm going to do here is just, um, this is light stuff. It, it's, this is a long duration drawing for me, many hours. I don't know how many hours. I haven't really kept track of how many hours I've been working on this, but let's just say it could be uh, two to three hours, I, probably more than that, because there's a concert that I keep listening to on YouTube, and I probably have listened to that concert like four times already. So maybe we're in like the three plus hour range on this drawing. And uh, like I said, it's a really slow process, and I just want to kind of get my hand going here. It's, this is very, very, very different than, say, a 20-minute gesture drawing, a... Um, five-minute gesture drawing, obviously with that, I'm, I'm pressing down really hard. But what you can see is when I do these drawings, this is kind of like an unfinished part over here of her arm. And uh, this is how I start really light. This is how I start really light. And then I start to press down hard um, and build up the tone. So you can see over here, her chest is kind of her chest plate sternum area is really kind of unfinished. I haven't even started that. I also just went really lightly with the facial features. Haven't gone nuts with that either. So I would say, you know, that's as dark as I can possibly get right here with the pencil. It doesn't look that dark on video. Please understand that um, it's darker in my studio. It's much, 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 um, God, uh, richer in color than it is on the video monitor, which stinks, which stinks. Now, listen, I'm going to try to turn on my other light now. And let's see what that does. It looks all right. It looks all right. I think I just got to accept it as it is and just let, let's draw here. So um, I'm going to do this circular motion right over here, and I'm just kind of wrapping around, wrapping around. So the, it's very hard for me to explain my brushstroke pencil stroke direction, it's the same thing. I'll try to do my best here. So people ask me all the time how I shade. Like I said a few minutes ago, I wrap around sometimes like that. I'm going in a circular motion. It's very, very light. Over here, I'm going in a big, long, circular motion. Now over here on this muscle called the tensor fasci lati, it's the funniest muscle name ever, I'm going to wrap around uh, this way. Now over here, what I'm doing is a small little circular motion with my pencil stroke. So right there, I'm doing three different pencil strokes. So I'm wrapping long around. Oh, this is a great song. Um, I'm wrapping short around, and over here, I'm doing scribbling. Now, when I come down to this lower leg, now over here, I'm starting to wrap around really lightly because I want to show that this leg is a cylinder. And when I look at that photo reference, I know it's really hard for you to see that because it's tiny. So I'm just wrapping around. I don't care if some of these brush strokes show. I kind of like that. Um, and the big thing that, that is going to help you is when you draw these shapes, like this line that separates. So this little kneecap over here, love kneecaps. Uh, over here is a little bump on your tibia called the um, tibial tuberosity. Yeah, tibial tuberosity. And uh, so it's just wrapping around that little bump on your tibia right over there. Over here, I'm wrapping around. And then you do that as well. So with the white charcoal, where's my white charcoal pencil? So my materials are simple. Let me just look at some comments. Mario is here. Thank you for joining us today, Mario. Gina is here. Gorgeous drawing. Uh, Matt, just lovely, lovely. Yeah, you got it. Thank you, Gina. It's okay, dude. Ah, okay. Um, Michael Verton. Hey, Matt. Cheers from Edmonton, Canada. Oh, those doggone Edmonton Oilers. They beat the Islanders drive for five back in the 80s. But yeah, that's age. I'm aging myself. Is it really necessary to understand learn anatomy if you can understand that? So if Michael, here's, here's my answer to that. My answer is very, very um, boring. You can do an, a phenomenal figure drawing without the knowledge of anatomy. Uh, however, sometimes uh, 
phenomenal is too strong of a word. You can do a really good looking figure drawing without the knowledge of anatomy. But what winds up happening is your figures tend to look more like a blow up doll. I know that sounds like absurd, but they tend to look like inflated. And there's something to say about when you draw bone, uh, the skeleton, the bone of the figure, like you if you just render form and you don't know what you're rendering, you're not understanding how that muscle and bone is, is working. And then there are some poses like gesture drawing that you would draw that you want to show the muscle really tensing. And if you have no idea what that muscle is or what it's doing, um, it's going to look like a blow up doll. Like it's going to look like a balloon. Like there's somebody's drawings that I absolutely love that this person will go unnamed but sometimes their older drawings look like they were a balloon um, because the anatomy just wasn't there. So here's my answer. Uh, study one bone a week, 25 minutes, easy. Anatomy is a long-term study, not a, a short-term. Study one bone a week. Start with the easy ones, the collarbones. And um, then when you're done with the bones, you could restudy them or you can go to the muscles. One muscle a week. What's an easy muscle? Uh, God, the deltoid. It, it's, it's everywhere, the deltoid, it, and it's going to pay uh, dividends to you. I hope that helped. Um, made by Dawn. Yeah, long time no here. You got it. Grant Harper, hi from the UK. Colby Scotus. Hey, Matt. Hey, Colby. Uh, made by Dawn Belize. Nice. Steven Greco. Uh, <laughs> your Islanders beat my Rangers last night and still hurts. Yeah, I, I felt bad for the Rangers. I mean, I get it. The Rangers are a really good team, and they'll be kicking the Islanders' butt in a few years. Um, they were missing Kreider. They were missing um, their defensemen, Truba. So I, I understand. I, I would never talk down on the Rangers. I get it, Stephen. Um, yeah, it's so windy here, uh, Mario. In I'm on eastern Long Island, and it's so windy. It's like this gale force wind. Hey, Ivana. Where did, you, where did I get the photo? Um, uh, I, I promise you, I will put a link in the, in the description below the video when I'm done with the live stream. It's, uh, I forgot what it's called. Stillandmotionpictures.com. Stillandmotionpictures.com might be the website. You can purchase a photo pack or you can download a, a small photo pack for free. All right, getting back to the drawing here. Uh, so again, there's going to be some parts of this drawing that I'm going to leave a little unfinished. I know I'm really not really showing you hardcore drawing, uh, in this video. And I, I want to just draw a little bit more for you here. I'll look at the comments in, in a second. So with this breast now, you don't want to have that hard edge line. I want to turn it a little bit to show the modeling of the form. And I don't want to go too dark over here. So I'm trying to wrap around with my pencil strokes. I'm looking at my reference. And I'm coming up over here. So, uh, Stephen, just to get back to your question about anatomy, this little thing here, if you don't know what this is, you're like, well, what the hell am I even drawing? Like, is it a bone? Is it a muscle? And things can start to get like a little wonky if you don't really know what it is. So anatomy is really, really super duper overwhelming. And that's why I say start one bone a week. It's really... Uh, the least intimidating way to start to learn anatomy. Like if you prop open an anatomy book, because there's so many good ones out there, you're just going to, your eyes are going to glaze over and you're going to say, oh my God, this is absolutely impossible. How am I supposed to learn all of this? And you just shut the book immediately because it's too overwhelming. So, I mean, I've been studying anatomy since second year of college. And if I tell you when that was, I'm really going to feel old. That was back in 1987. Hey, David Patterson. I'm glad I'm back, too. So just finished up the semester today at the School of Visual Arts. It was my last Friday class, 30 weeks on Zoom. And uh, I felt really bad for my students, even though I gave them everything I could possibly give them in terms of my knowledge. Uh, Zoom is just not like the physical classroom. But I did the best that I could, and they did the best that they could. And today was my last class, and it was a lot of fun. Each... Um, students share their favorite artists and i love that class because we get to i get to discover all these artists that i, I would never um, discover and there's one artist where is my little post-it note that is incredible oh i should remember her name i got all these post-it notes with uh, names of artists and um god 
Uh, Rose, Rosemary Valero O'Connell's amazing. And uh, please let it be on here, this person. Oh, Claire Hummel. Oh, my God. Um, you got to check out Claire Hummel, H-U-M-M-E-L. I don't know Claire Hummel. She doesn't know me. But her work is just amazing and really inspiring, especially if you're into animation. Hey, Omar, welcome. Thank you. Karita Wuda, thank you. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Thank you, David. Yeah, so like where anatomy, uh, Michael, is important is uh, where bone comes to the surface of the skin. And where is that? Joints, the knee, the ankle, the collarbone, the elbow, the wrist. That's where anatomy pays dividends like you can't imagine what your drawings. Reminds me of Frazetta. He did a lot of anatomy studies for the muscles. Yeah. It, everybody does art for their own reason, and so for me, I'm all about uh, the figure and portraits, and I just absolutely love anatomy. It's really what I'm into, so I, I can do this stuff all day. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Dante. Anatomy is overwhelming, but once you know a little, it makes up for your... Yeah, yeah, a little bit goes a long way, and then a little bit each week. Oh, there goes my reference. I'm sorry, I'm going to get my thumb in the middle of the camera. Okay, I have my reference up on an iPad. So I'm drawing standing up right now. And if you, I don't know if I can show you this, but I've got two stand-up desks that go up and down in a matter of seconds. And it's really uh, changed my whole work process. I, I can't tell you how beneficial that is for my body. And uh, yeah, I had to revamp my whole entire studio. Uh, being on Zoom for, you know, four and a half hours on a class, two hours for another class, two and a half hours for another class. It adds up. And when you sit down all of that time, it just kind of destroys you. Uh, sitting is definitely the new smoking in 2021 here. So whenever you can stand and work, the better. Okay. Uh, so you see what I'm doing here with this, with her jawbone? I'm barely pressing down. And I'm listening to Radiohead in my AirPods as I'm, it, I'm actually listening to Radiohead on YouTube. Uh, and <laughs> so, yeah, I, I just, I always play Radiohead in the classroom, and then I kind of got sick of them. And uh, we just recently did something for my animation students where I wanted them to draw things moving. So we drew radio, a Radiohead concert where they were moving. And, and Tom York's, like, impossible to draw because he doesn't stop moving. Um, and so I'm like, what'd you guys think of that? And they're like, well, they're kind of old school. You And I'm like, God, I'm really getting old. <laughs> I thought uh, Radiohead was kind of cool. But yeah, they're saying they're very, very old school. So when I get to this part of the drawing, and when you get uh, to this part of the drawing, it's really important that you move around and you don't get locked into one area. Like lately, I've been locked into... The landscapers are out in force today. Um, so the leaf blows around lately. I've been getting locked into just drawing torsos and I love that. And, and it's quick, it's a quick, immediate practice session, two to three hours. You can do a finished drawing and you're done. You don't have to worry about hands. You don't have to worry about portraits and you can keep your touch going, but then you get trapped into just drawing torsos and you lose your touch of all proportions. So to get all proportions, you need, I start at the center Everybody starts a different way. There's no right and wrong way to start. You start at an area that looks easy for you to draw. Some teachers would disagree with me. That's cool uh, to each their own. I start at the center, and then you branch your way out, and then you kind of work the whole drawing at once. Let me look at some of these comments. Um, uh, Komathi, welcome. I'm sorry for turning my head. I have my comments over there. What should I study first, the skeleton? or the, Oh, totally the skeleton. So if I go back to my college experience back in the 80s, we did the skeleton in the fall semester, and we did the muscles in the spring semester. The easiest start with easy collarbones, humerus, uh, femur, these simple, simple bones. Yeah, wow. I wish I had the site psychology physiology courses okay cool dawn so many bones to draw 
Yeah, well, you don't have to worry about the spine bones. You could just think about the S-curve for the spine. I've been drawing since I'm three years old, Ivana. And I just have the story about my Italian grandfather that I say all the time, where he must have um, subconsciously put my anal retentiveness in my brain when I showed him a drawing when I was three years old in my parents' old kitchen. And he said, oh, the wheel's not round. Make it wheel. And he must have ruined me for the rest of my life <laughs> in a good way. So, yeah, I've been doing this forever. Hey, Moises, good to see you, brother. I hope all is well. We're missing you on the Zoom classes on Tuesday. I know you can't go, but we miss you. The re redacted computer. Love it. Lil Miss Random. Hey, haven't seen you in a while, Lil Miss Random. Welcome. Robert Ebersold. I used to do drafting by hand. It was always done standing with a stool to rest on occasionally. Yeah, I, I do both. So the beautiful thing about the stand-up stand desks uh, is that in a matter of literally 10 seconds, you press the buttons, they're electronic, and I'll show you. Like you can see, if I do this very quickly, see how this is going down? And uh, look at my little post-it note. What does it say? Lean back, which I never do. And so, yeah, and I can just lift this up in a second. I'm telling you, this is like killer. If you're sitting all day, um, one of your goals should be able to get a stand-in desk. Uh, they, it doesn't have to be expensive. Like you can buy a stand-in desk for 89 bucks. It's this thing that you put onto your existing desk and it's manual and you squeeze these levers and you lift it up. And in a matter of like five seconds, you're going from sitting to standing. It's really good for your brain and your body. I got to admit, standing for a long period of time isn't pleasant either, but it's just about variety. Is that a small laser cannon thingy on your left? What do you mean? Um, small laser cannon thingy on my left. This? Laser cannon. <laughs> Maybe uh, expand on that. Is that a small laser cannon thingy on your left? I don't know. Okay, so uh, how should I learn figure drawing as a beginner? I don't have so much money to spend. Um, step one, every day do a, a drawing from a photo, 20 minutes. Uh, every day do a copy, a small little section of an old master's drawing. Uh, so uh, you can do that from the internet. That's easy. Raphael, Da Vinci, those old school people, they're all over the internet. Uh, yeah, and then a life drawing class is really the best, but if you don't have a lot of money working from photos, uh, quality photos that have good light and shade, not like photos of sexy women or men that have like the worst lighting. Don't confuse a hot, sexy model that you like to look at with a good photo that you can draw from. They're two separate things. Sound like an old man right now. Um, Okay, so just make sure, like, this photo is phenomenal of this model. That's why I'm drawn from it, because it's got awesome light and shade. Okay, so draw from good photography, copy old master drawings, uh, study their line, learn anatomy, and go to a life drawing class. Life drawing class should be first, but if you're limited on money and you don't, can't get to a life drawing class in, this, in these times, they're usually all closed anyway in COVID, then, yeah, f good photos. Um, and you could make a standing desk out of anything. You can pile up books. The thing is, is, um, sure, I did that for years, but it's good to be able to switch back and forth, especially in nowadays and COVID times. I should be drawing here. I'm talking too much. Um, you want, if you're in a Zoom situation and you're taking a class or you're on a live stream, and you're working, it's, it's good in a matter of a second to go from sitting to standing. Okay, let me use a little white charcoal here. Let me just look. It could pass as a laser cannon with some tweaks. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and the other good thing is you can walk away from the computer. All right, let's. So, getting back to the pencil, um, 
in a second. Over here, I'm using some longer strokes. So this leg's catching a ton of light, okay? So you really want to go pretty heavy with this. This is our shadow. And technically, this foot is also catching a ton of light, but I do not want that foot to have much white charcoal on it. I, have, I want most of the white charcoal to be on this woman's chest because it's her chest is closest to the light. Okay, so you see over here, I'm pressing down really light. So this is what I would call my first go through. So right over here, if you don't know anatomy, what the heck is this little bump on her skin? That looks to me to be second rib. Okay, so this would be first rib. And this would be collarbone. Um, now, uh, it, could, it could be third rib, but I'm going to say that this is second rib. And this is her sternum. Chet, the rib cage is pretty hairy to draw. If you start drawing the rib cage first, you're going to check out mentally really quickly. Uh, I mean, sure, you can practice drawing the rib cage as an oval, and that's fine. Uh, but yeah, to do all the bones immediately, all the 12 ribs, you're going you're gonna to check out. It's not going to be pleasant. I'm just going to switch photos. So when I draw from a photo like this, I have one that's overexposed and I have one that's underexposed. So that means I have one photo printed out that's not printed out. It's on my iPad. That's really light. And one that's regular exposure. And I have it light because I want to see the details in the shadow. And uh, yeah. And I have it at a regular. This photo is pretty dark. I have it at a regular um, exposure because uh, I want to see the details in the light. So there's lots of little details going on over here on this woman's chest, and it's, it's really not that light. So after I put that um, white charcoal down, what I'll do, uh, what I've been doing on this drawing is I take this Bristol brush, and I'm just going to soften it. Not a lot, just a little. Okay, and I'm softening that, and I'm going to take this little fan brush i'm trying to go light with the blend in. i usually use a bristol brush but today i'm just using these soft brushes so i'm going to just soften a little bit over here take the edge off blend into the light okay and uh i haven't blended a lot at all on this drawing i'm going really chill with the blend in. it doesn't look like i'm doing much of anything but it is now you have to be very careful when you do this because you do lift pencil off of the paper. So this would be the identical thing I would do when I would oil paint. At, I would paint for 20 minutes, take a fan brush, soften out all my brush strokes, blend everything together, and then you're good to go for your next layer. Let me just check out. Uh, the mic looks like a, a laser. Uh, yeah, gotcha. It does? Do, now nah, I'm looking at it now, doesn't it? Um, I, I kind of got it, but I didn't get it. Yeah, just don't don't sweat the anatomy thing. Just a little bit at a time, one bone a week. You you could do like if if your big thing is digital painting in the morning when you wake up, you have a sketchbook. Just draw a bone in your sketchbook. Uh, Dante, do you have any tips for drawing hands? I always have a problem with them. They don't look natural. Yeah. So here's my short short tip. Okay, my short tip is go out and grab a George Bridgman book. I love the way George Bridgman draws hands and copy his hands because his hands are like a surface plane. And you have to first start and think about the hand as like a box. Uh, so this is the top and this is the side. So you see how my top is in light? I'm sorry, my top is in shadow, my side is in light. And then you start to branch out with fingers. Don't start getting into hairiness with the fingers. Uh, just keep it simple with the boxing. But really, George Bridgman is, is the way to go. And that's how I learned how to draw hands, by really studying George Bridgman. So th this is the advice that I just gave earlier in, in the live stream. When I was younger and I was building my illustration portfolio in the morning, I'd wake up and I would just copy old master's drawings. And uh, George Bridgman was somebody I would copy and uh, his hands are amazing. Now, the other thing that you can do with hands is um, understand the form of the hands via the surface planes. 
copy some George Bridgman, but also it's a lot of looking at the negative space. So the space in between the fingers. So that's old school drawing on the right side of the brain stuff. The Colorase Cadmium Red makes the, yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Um, Nairobi, thank you so much. Thank you. Nice. All right, Sandra, looking forward to it. Sandra's a member of DTO, and uh, she's been posting her drawings for a critique each and every week. Um, I'm not promoting my website because I'm overloaded with critiques. <laughs> it takes me an entire day to critique everybody's images. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a lot, no doubt. But if you want to check out my Instagram, you can check out my Instagram. I have links in the, in the show more below the video. Yeah, it's, that's a good investment to spend money on books. All right, Colby, gotcha, brother. I'm really not doing anything like insane here. This is like slow motion um, stuff. I get it. It's probably like watching paint dry, but I just wanted to come and say hello to y'all, and I'm going really super, super slow. And um, this is a whole different style of drawing than gesture. So now I'm going to go over this one more time, and my pencil stroke direction is wrapping around, wrapping around, wrapping around, wrapping around. We'll blend that out eventually. And there's a highlight over here. I haven't figured out where I'm going to take this drawing, but I, I definitely like the feeling of leaving part of it unfinished. Yep. Yep, there's a lot of good books out there. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so where to lose outlines. So you could lose outlines in the shadows. Uh, and that's what I'm doing over here. Her leg, if you can see it in the, in the video, in the reference here, her leg's totally in shadow. So shadows are a great place to not outline. So you would put a tone here in the background and blend it in. So you can't have hard edges everywhere. If you have hard edges everywhere, uh, your drawing's going to go completely flat. So the concept is to lose edges in the shadow. And the other concept is you can also lose edges in the light. Okay. Um, so that means you don't outline in the light, but I, I've become a little bit more stylized in my older age with drawing. And so I love outlines. And I, when I was younger, I used to just do the tone next to tone thing. And I get that. And that's a little bit more traditional, but I, I've been doing this for so many years. I just really dig line. So I, I don't care if the line flattens it out a little bit. I, I like that look. So you can take your finger, if you put too much white charcoal, just take your finger, rub some of it off. Um, if you see over here, this was my initial line, second line, third line. I could go over that a little bit with this. Uh, and don't be afraid to make mistakes because when you erase out your mistakes, uh, that's what will give your drawing more character with layers of texture. A little bit of light over here, comments, let me see. I know I want to join DTO, but life got in the way. Yeah, don't sweat it, Dawn. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. That's how I earn my living, so partially. And uh, yeah, I don't. If I get rid of DTO, I'm not. <laughs> not gonna be able to pay my bills. So uh, join when you can. No pressure. It's not going anywhere. Wrap around. This paper has a lot of weird markings on it as well. So you just have to kind of accept that. I know a lot of people don't like that. Um, I, I dig it. Like, I, I like all this weird texture. Uh, earlier on in my career, I hated textures. Uh, but now I, I find them really fun. And they add so much to the, to the artwork. So curve around with some of these lines. I know this is very faint. And you can probably barely even see what I'm doing here. And I apologize for that. It's just, I, I just wanted to come on YouTube and say hello. Um, this isn't going to be some like earth shattering like tutorial where I'm starting something from scratch. Uh, I'll, I'll do that again for you, no doubt. 
but it's been a while, so I'm like, yeah, let me get my butt back on YouTube. So you see what I do? I work a little bit with the white charcoal, and then I blend out. Appreciate that. Um, books for anatomy. Um, one second. Okay, so everyone should own this book, uh, Bridgman's Complete Guide to Drawing from Life. Oh God, you know, I'm, I'm looking at me on YouTube and all of a sudden I see like Tom York walking. I'm like, holy shit, how did Tom York get on my video? <laughs> oh God. All right, so this one, everyone should own this. I love this. Uh, yeah, that's not bad anatomy nudity. So I love that one from Sarah Simblett. Really great book. Okay. Uh, the drawings in here are amazing. They're really, really great. And this one, I don't think it's in print anymore, but this book rocks. Now, when you look through it, some of the drawings are, I, I got to be careful what I say. Some of the drawings might feel a little primitive, but this is how you learn anatomy. So you start here with the rough skeleton. That's how you learn anatomy. And then it progresses on to one muscle group at a time. Okay, so this book, it's, I don't think it's in print anymore, but you can probably find a used copy. I can't tell you how many years I've had this book. It's all ripped up and stuff. That's a great book. Okay, I love that book. It's really great. Um, yeah, you got it, Robert. Thank you for joining. Yeah, Mike Matisse knows his stuff, no doubt. Uh, he's good, too. I have an entire... i sharpening my pencil. I have an entire anatomy uh, course on my website that hits just about 90% of the muscles and bones that you need to know. The only one that I did not finish, I think, is the lower leg. It, it's either the lower leg or the back of the hand. I, it's been a while. I, I don't remember. Um, but I have a full anatomy course, and it starts with the rib cage, either the skull, no skull, rib cage, pelvis, and uh, yeah, you can download photos of the model. You can download uh, just drawings of uh, the anatomy. There's so many things that you can get from that course, and anatomy is like my passion. So uh, yeah, totally, you you can learn there too. I'm, Doing a little self-promotion here, which I don't like to do. In a chat, I, oh yeah, awesome, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, there's so many great teachers out there, so you just, you have to, uh, choose the teacher that uh, works for you in terms of their personality. So you can uh, find a great teacher that's really, really good, but maybe you don't dig their personality. And there's something to be said for that. So you either A, uh, suffer through you not liking their personality and you learn from their skill, or B, you find a different teacher that you really like their personality and that you click with. That's what I usually say to the students when they have to pick a thesis advisor for fourth year of college. I'm like, listen, um, number one, you pick the thesis instructor based on what you're weakest at. So if you're weakest at backgrounds, pick a, a, a thesis instructor that's going to help you with your backgrounds. But you also need to make sure that you get along with that teacher and you like their style of teaching and their personality or else, yeah, it's not, you're not going to click with them. So there's so many great teachers on, on YouTube, obviously. Um, they're all over the place. There's like millions of them. So you just have to pick the teacher that really works best for you. And what some teachers have a certain focus, like maybe somebody's into watercolor. I'm really into um, the figure, portraits, composition. I love doing composition. 
Gotcha. I am rich. Laugh out loud. You, yeah, you got it, Rich. I understand. I just don't like to o- overdo it because I, I've been on um, situations where people promote, promote, and it gets really annoying. And it's like, okay, dude, I got you. I, I, I got you. I'll, I'll, and they just keep promoting. And uh, so I don't want to be that person. But yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Thank you for that. So I get it. This is slow, everybody. So um, you see what I'm doing here with this, with my pencil? I'm going to work over here. Actually, let me work over here on a white paper. See how light I'm pressing down with that where you can barely see it? That's really what I'm doing right now. That's why this is not the most exciting thing for you to watch um, in terms of like long drawing versus short drawing. Like short drawings where I start from scratch, a little bit more exciting to watch. Um, This is a little slow. But again, I've had people asking me over and over, uh, how do you do that rendering thing with your pencil? And so for those of you who ask me that, this is for you, no doubt. I'm just wrapping around over here. Now, when I'm wrapping around over here, you don't want to press down hard because then you have a vertical leg tilted and then you're doing horizontal strokes. You're going to start the stop the viewer's eye like in their tracks and it's going to just make your drawing really choppy. So you have to be careful going against the grain. Um, Yep. Well, yeah, I appreciate that, Mario. I just don't have his hair. Uh, maybe a little bit over here is sticking up today. Oh, that's so cool. Mike Matisse is live right now. That is freaking awesome. I think um, Mike Matisse graduated from the School of Visual Arts. I wish there was a way that we can say hello. Um, that'd be really cool. He doesn't know me from Adam. Uh, but yeah, we graduated from the School of Visual Arts. He might have graduated the same year as me or a year or two after. I think he might be younger than me. Um, I don't know. I graduated in 90. But that's, that's pretty cool. Maybe you can um, go to the other live stream and tell him I said hi. <laughs> you can be like, who the hell is that? Uh, so his, what he teaches with the force, I show Mike's book in my class and I tell all of my students to buy it. And if they don't want to buy it, I say, okay, great, don't buy it. Go to the SVA library and take it out of the library and look at it and draw Mike's drawings. I think Mike Matisse is a wonderful teacher for gesture, and I kind of teach the same stuff, uh, gesture as well. I love gesture drawing uh, because I teach in the animation department, and that's mostly what we do. And it's, it's awesome. Like, I never do this in class. Like, this, the students would die if I was doing this in class. So everything is about short stuff, short, short, short stuff. Yeah, rendering is a form of meditation, no doubt. Yeah, Michael, you're right about that. Yeah, uh, my health battle is an ongoing battle that will never end. And uh, so I have good days and bad days. Yeah, the rendering thing is that thing you just have to really like it. Uh, show Mike Matisse. Uh, where I don't know if I have his book. There it is. Oh, I'm gonna go get it. <laughs> the one the one thing that you have to understand about me is I'm um I'm not like one of these people with the ego where I'm like oh I don't want to talk about that other teacher because they might take students away from me. It's all good. We're all just trying to, you know, help you guys get better with your artwork. And so I promote Mike any chance I get. And again, Mike doesn't know me and I don't know Mike, uh, but I love this book and I bring it. I used to bring it to school and I don't bring it to school anymore because I have a computer cart in my classroom. So we just look at his drawings and I and some of my favorite drawings of Mike's. Um, damn, there's 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 so many of them that I, I really, really like. And I learned from Mike, too, looking at his drawings. Uh, I should be holding it this way so you can see. Um, so, yeah, get Mike's book. Uh, follow him. He's really great. And gesture is really important. I think it's, it's, it's super important, okay? So, yeah, if you go to his live stream, tell him I said hello. So this is a, this, she has gesture too. And the way that you're, this really looks terrible on video. My God. 
what is going on with this camera? Um, it's so much darker and richer. So if you go to my Instagram page or you go to my Facebook page or you go to, to my community tab on my YouTube channel, you'll see the red drawings that I've done with this Verithin pencil, the crimson red, and you'll see how much darker they are than this video. This video is like trash right now. Yeah, you, so here's, here's another philosophy that I have with teachers. Just treat your learning. If you're not in college, uh, but you're trying to learn how to, you're self-learning on YouTube how to draw, treat teachers like a semester. So uh, one semester you have one teacher, then the next semester you have another teacher. And, you, and that's how college is. Every semester you get new teachers. And then sometimes teachers come around. So I teach in the first year and I also teach in the fourth year. So that, that's a great philosophy uh, so you don't get bored of the same teacher. Yeah. I appreciate that, Kiki. Thank you, Surabai. Hey, Anna. Thank you, Anna, for joining. I hope all is well. I'm going to see you Wednesday for our coaching. Uh, all right, let's see. Where am I going to go next with this? So I'm going to go a little darker with her abs over here. So I want a little reflected light on the side plane of her abs, which would be her obliques. This is our, her oblique. And then we're going to wrap in again. I know I'm kind of being re really repetitive with this. And I'm doing a circular pencil stroke right now. And um, don't go too dark in the lights. I'm going to go a little darker over here now. Build this up. So I'm just doing a scribble. I'm scribbling. Scribbling is huge for me. So all I'm doing is scribbling figure eights. Scribbling figure eights. And man, oh man, it's, there's a storm coming. Holy Moses. It's like starting to rain and the wind is going ape. Oh my God. So you really want to go a little zen? You do these long drawings and then on YouTube you listen to Plum Village. It's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Just go there. You'll see what I'm talking about. And you'll be as relaxed as you possibly could be. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm, I'm scribbling. I'm doing circular pencil strokes. And then I'm doing circular pencil strokes. And I'm going back up to continue up with this line that separates the light from the dark. I'm going all the way up, softening that line. I know it doesn't look like I'm doing much, but this is how you render. Soft for hours. And you go all the way up. Uh, and you build up that dark halftone, okay? So ask yourself the question, where's the lightest light? Well, lightest light for me is on her knee, here. Second lightest light is on the breast. So everything is going to compare to those lightest lights. So I'm wrapping around now. I know you can barely see this, but I'm going to be working on this drawing for many, many, many hours. Um, I want this to be fully rendered, and uh, yeah, so I'm going super slow. I'll, I'll post it to my Instagram and, and the community blog post on, on YouTube here. Let's go back to the white pencil. No, Truffs is downstairs. Um, so it's a village of plums. No, it's Plum Village. It's, uh, I think it's a monastery. And... Uh, it's, yeah, it's a whole bunch of um, Buddhist monks teaching you how to be in the moment. Thich Nhat Han, I think, is the guy's name. So if you're stressed out and you want to de-stress, watch him. And I'm clueless with all that stuff, so I'm trying to learn. So this white pencil goes over the erased part. See that how that like didn't go light over there? There's like a little dark. So I'll take my brush and just blend a little. Mm. 
That's turn into a side plane, so I don't want to go too light over there. Uh, I, I haven't been sick. I just have um, structure problems with my neck in terms of herniated discs and all that. So it's just, you know, dealing with that. Uh, I wouldn't call it sick. I would call it structurally challenged. <laughs> just uh, Google. Um, don't Google that. Yeah, just don't. Yeah, let's change the subject. Uh, absolutely. So I just, I have herniated discs in my neck, multiple ones, which is really, really, really bad. Yeah, there you go, Nancy. Um so that's why sometimes I, I don't come on YouTube because I'm just, um, it causes all weird side effects and it's not cool. But the last thing you want to do is hear me bitching about my health. So we're going to change that subject like immediately. Um, so this is a slow buildup. Now, to put things into perspective, let, let, let's, let's do a long, I'm going to exaggerate, maybe I've been working on this drawing for three and a half, four hours. That's really nothing because there are people who work on their drawings for like 100 hours. Um, so this is, is nothing so far. It, you have to do what you like. And some people hate this. There's a, there, I have a couple students who just graduated. One, uh, Joey, is a, is a student who just graduated. And Joey hates to do anything like longer than a five. Like doing a five minute drawing is like sacrilegious for Joey. So I know Joey's never going to hear this, but if she does, she's probably laughing at me, and then she's probably pissed at me at the same time. But Joey's a great student, and um, yeah, J-O-I-E. So don't go soup. Don't make, how do I say this? You don't want to make the bottom of the breast like perfectly round because y your drawing's going to kind of look fake. So I'm trying not to do that. Uh, I'm trying to have it rest on the rib cage. I don't think I'm doing a great job of that, but I'll get there. So curve around. That shadow curves around. And I'm going to make this a little less pointy, a little softer. So you see my head bouncing around. Um, not good when you have a bad neck, but you have to just constantly look and draw, look and draw, look and draw. So one of the first things that I tell my students first day of class Stop looking down at your paper and actually look at the model. Stop looking at your paper and look at the model. I appreciate that, Sorabai. I appreciate that. I do. I, Michael, I do use a different brush for the white versus the black. Um, so you see this Bristol brush, how it's black? And this one's pink right now so yeah and these these brushes um, they clean very easily so I'm not using that hardcore Bristol brush um, for this one this is just uh, I want to be a little soft I, I, I don't want to over blend form um, is only important if you want to show three dimension so if you want to draw uh, more flat, there's n absolutely nothing wrong with that. You just want to be clear about what your intentions are in terms of your personal art style. So there are many, many beautiful artists out there who are create flat art, and it's gorgeous. Like Most of animation is kind of flat. Um, form is important if your intention is to draw realistically and three-dimensionally. If you don't care about that, then you don't have to worry about form. Then you start to take on a different um, kind of venue, and that venue is color, value, texture, pattern. Those are different words. Form is important when you want to do realistic stuff that is three-dimensional. Hope that made sense. I always love form. Now, um, if I was to outline my entire drawing with a hard line, I would lose form because that will act as a flattener. And so I have to really, I'm going to decide sooner rather than later whether or not I'm going to put a background tone in or the chair or whatever, uh, or I'm just going to keep it as a figure study. But let's do a little bit of her hair. I know you can't even see her hair, but you see what I'm doing here with her hair? I'm just building up 
and where her I, I measure from her forehead to her hair over here. Let me just lower Tom York in my ear, and I'm going to go to a different concert. So let's go to In the Basement. Yeah, let's start over. I love that one. Um, I don't know if I'm going to draw the chair. I'm going to just, this, just, this piece is going to take me on a little bit of a journey, and I don't know where it's going to take me. No, I don't listen to the Draftsman podcast. So, I mean, I've, I've been in the art world professionally since 2000 and, uh, not, not 2000, 1990. So I graduated from college in 1990, got my first illustration job in 1990, 1991. So I've been, I've done the illustration career 18 years. I've taught at college for 23, 24 years. The last thing I want to do, even though the Draftsman podcast is probably great and helping many, many people out, is listen to an art podcast. <laughs> I want to listen to anything but that. Um, so, but I, I'm not knocking anybody. I'm sure the podcast is great. It's just I've, I'm kind of comfortable in my shoes right now when you've been, so let's say 1990, how many years ago was that? A long time ago. A very long time ago. And so, yeah, absolutely. I, I don't want, um, I just, I, I can barely find enough time to draw as it is. So if I'm going to, when I draw, I like to listen to co concerts um, and some podcasts, no doubt, but it's not going to be an art podcast. There's no way I'm going to listen to an art podcast. And, and that's for a multitude of reasons, not because I think like I know everything. It's just, I, I, I'm just surrounded by art. Um, with teaching uh, multiple days a week with my website, with critiquing people's images. And so I just, I, I need a break from um, art speak sometimes. And so when I'm going to draw, I'm totally listening to a concert or um, something that has to do with outside of uh, art. So now you see I'm holding my pencil this way. So I'm going to come in a little bit like this and soften that edge. I don't really like to hold my pencil this way too much, um, but I'm doing it over here. Just trying to turn that leg a little bit. 31 years, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. Sounds like I'm sounding like a little kid. Um, Devrald Patterson, I appreciate your comments, man. Really cool. Same. Um, goblin butter, wow, that sounds pretty good. Okay, so I just realized that you are slanting. Do you prefer to stand while drawing, or is it because of your back? Oh, John, that was really cool. So maybe I should watch this back. So when, I, when you say I'm slanting, am I going, how am I slanting? Which way am I going, to my right or to my left? I would say right now as I'm looking, I'm leaning to my left, and my reference is to my left. Um, so... That's a really good question. What I've learned, so there's somebody on YouTube that you've got to check out. They're called Sterling Structural Therapy. The therapist is Dana Sterling. And I'm, I'm, uh, they're coaching me with my posture. And what they've told me is that my head is always tilted to the right. And for many, many years, I, I go to the right because I'm a righty. So now I've done what I've done is I've set everything up on the left. So I want to adjust my pelvis, everything, so I can look more to the left. And why is this important? It's really, really important because I have a 19-year-old student already who has carpal tunnel s syndrome who couldn't draw today in class. And um, it was really upset about it. And the reason why they can't draw is because they have tech neck. It's not their wrist, it's their neck uh, because uh, this student draws constantly and um, you can really screw up your body by always having your head in front of your rib cage because your head's really heavy. Um, and so, yeah, it's really important that you are aware of your structure and your posture before problems occur. So check out Sterling Structural therapy on YouTube. Um, they really talk about fascia and posture. And um, um, Anna is my therapist. And you don't really see Anna on the YouTube videos. You see Dana. 
and uh, they're really interesting to listen to um, if you have aches and pains in your body. So I'm, I'm going to turn this into the Aches and Pains YouTube channel. Absolutely. So I'm listening to right now, I love this. It's Mix Radiohead, the numbers Johnny and Tom, and a CR78. The numbers Johnny and Tom and a CR78. It's so good. It's so good. I know people either love or hate Radiohead, um, but that is really good. It's so chill to draw from, too. Uh, Moises, what's that, Moises? Yeah, it's just do it for fun. Yeah, it's going to be called the Aches and Pains channel. When you're an artist you and you work doing art for a living, really what you are is uh, somebody very similar uh, to someone who works in a factory who you're doing the same motion every day and you get a repetitive some if you're painting digitally or traditionally 10 hours a day you're you're going to really get a repetitive use injury it's just a fact of life so it's really important that you um, balance your body because your injuries won't be severe if you do that and if, if you're an artist and you um, work from photos and you tape your photo on the left side of your easel and you look to the left a thousand times a day at the photo reference, um, you're going to get a repetitive use injury. And it's just a fact of life. So it's really important that you um, balance your body. And a lot of students don't even want to deal with me talking about that until they get hurt. And there's two students, actually. Uh, one student, like she did drawings of things next to her desk. And I'm like, what is that? She's like, oh, those are my um, pads for my shoulders. Like they're like those Ben Gay type pads that you heat pads that you put on your shoulder when my shoulder hurts. I'm like, oh my god, that's insane. <laughs> um, yeah, check it out. Oh, that stinks, Mish. Yeah, absolutely. You're right, Moises. Let's go back to her hair. So I'm um, drawing. It's very hard to see, but I have my pencil strokes. So you see, I worked a little bit of her body. Now I, I need to move and I need to work a little bit on the hair. I get it. This is like watching paint dry, but I just wanted to come on. For, how long have I been on? Oh, God, we've been on for an hour. I'll hang out for a little while longer, um, answer some of your questions. Anybody has questions? So her bun is really messy. I can't even see it. Let me switch to my other photo. Yeah, I can't even see it. So I'm just curving around here. Yeah, I, I, I'm on a, not right now, but I'm on um, a life drawing schedule where we draw with a model for 20 minutes and then we get up and we move for five. And then in that five, sometimes I'll do a drawing demo for the students uh, in class. So 20, 20 sitting, five moving around. That, that's a really good formula for, for keeping your body in shape. Sitting for long periods of time is not good. Now, I'm seeing... Uh, I have a hard time. I have to really lighten up the shadows to see her hair because when you look at the photo, you can't even see her hair. But I got to be careful that I don't make that head too big. Uh, and I'm seeing that a little bit right now. So what I need to look at is where this hair is in relationship to the bridge of her nose. How far is that? And I need to make sure that that looks good. And then I'll get a lighter version of the photo um, here. Yeah, I'm doing it, Sorabai, no doubt. Every every day. Hey Sebastian. Maestro. Jethro. Yeah, the the so what I did, check this out. You might want to try this. 
Um, years ago, yeah, I my hand, my right hand was killing me because I was painting for many, many hours. So I started using my mouse with my left hand, and I made a decision that I will never use my mouse with my with not never is too strong of a word. Um, my trackpad on my other computer is on my left. So I only use the trackpad with my non-dominant hand, my left hand, and I've trained my left hand to have some finesse. So I don't want to do those menial tasks with uh, a mouse with my right hand. I, I want to use my left hand, and I want to save my right hand for drawing. And so you might want to try that, like things that are repetitive, like your mouse. Use your left hand. Like I, my son came into my office and I'm like, Luke, click around. And he couldn't even do it. Like he couldn't hold my, my trackpad. He's like, would you just move it to the right? I'm like, move it to the right. Like, but it, yeah, I don't even think about it now. I'm, I'm pretty good with the trackpad with my uh, left hand and I'm not going to waste my um, finesse tendons and muscles on uh, a trackpad, no doubt. So what we're doing here with our hair is... Um, She's a redhead, no doubt. Uh, we're going to just build that up softly. So, hey, Philip, good to see you. That's okay. I'll be back. Uh, baseball or American football? If I played American football, I'd probably be paralyzed. <laughs> baseball, I haven't played baseball since I was in um, high school. Hockey was my sport, and that's probably why my neck is screwed up because I was a lunatic. You got it, John. Yeah, kind of, kind of. Nancy, are the Tuesday Zooms still on? Yeah, Nancy, I've done um, 20 Tuesday Zooms in a row. Uh, Tuesday Zoom classes are not going anywhere. Uh, I'm going to be teaching starting on uh, Monday, I think the 15th or the 18th, a uh, perspective class. And then that's a two-day-a-week perspective class at the School of Visual Arts. So I'm going to squeeze in the um, Tuesday class um, for DTO members. Let's do a little shading on Tuesdays, every Tuesday. And this month, so each month has a topic. So uh, April was perspective. We did one point perspective, two point perspective. We did three point perspective. We did perspective with um, landscapes and uh, interior. We did interior spaces. Uh, we did buildings. And now uh, the month of um, May is going to be textures. And we're going to start the first two weeks is going to be this is you see that line on her chin. I know that's hard to see. That's the texture of the paper. There's nothing I can do about that. Um, so that's where this paper can be a little bit annoying. So we're starting on Tuesday with how to draw a fabric. And I'm going to use a historical costume from a series called uh, Outlander. And it's a Scottish um, beautiful dress on the main ac actress uh, in the show Outlander. I think it's on Netflix. And uh, yeah, I can't wait. I love historical costumes. That's going to be really fun. Yeah, that's great, Little Miss Random. Laugh out loud. Are you sure you're not Canadian? Well, my last name's French Canadian, and I played hockey was my life growing up. So I would play hockey, and then when I get home, I would draw. Yeah, the trackball. That's a good idea. Gotcha, Sorabai. Thank you. I just got that now. Uh, Moises, I, I know you want me to give you a, a firm day. I can't give you a firm day um, with the live streams on YouTube. The live streams on YouTube are going to be random. What is going to be firm is the Zoom class on Tuesday, no doubt. Um, if, I, if I say that um, I'm going to do consistently on Friday and then one Friday I don't do it, I'm going to seem like a real flake. So I, I don't want to do that to you and I don't want to do that to me. So uh, the YouTube thing will just be random, no doubt. And I'll try to give more notice. So this summer, on um, if I do the live streams, though, Moises, they will be on a Thursday or a Friday, no doubt, because I have a Monday live class, a Tuesday live class, um, a Wednesday live class in um, May. 
So there's no way I'm going to do it on those days. And I don't want to do it on Saturday anymore, especially in the summer months. So it's either going to be on Thursday or it's going to be on a Friday. So I'm, 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 I'm going to say most likely Friday. See what I'm doing? I'm doing a very light circular motion. So if we look at the white paper, see what I'm doing with my pencil? I'm barely pressing down. See what I'm doing? Light pressure. That's what I'm doing here. I'm adding a little gradation. I'm curving around. Okay, let's skip the YouTube ad here. And yeah, so where am I going to go next here? Um, let's do some longer pencil strokes over here. Go back to, this is my home base right here. It's what I understand. A uh, home base should be an area of the drawing that looks really familiar to you. Okay, so now I got to admit, I'm getting a little tired of standing up. Now, if this was class and I was working digitally, I can switch in five seconds, no doubt. But since I'm working traditionally with my camera, my camera's overhead and there's no way I'm going to change my camera setup. It's such a pain in the butt. Montreal, Canada. Just back from work. Andre, is that how you say your name? I will. Thank you, Nancy. Quebec. Do we need a special paper for white chalk? You just need a paper that has a tone to it because white on white isn't, it's not going to fly. Um, so some kind of tone. This is, this is just basic Strathmore paper. Um, nothing crazy. So this is I'm getting a little eye fatigue here. Cause when I look at her, I'm looking into the light. Um, first rib. It's a little confusing right there. Second rib. Sorry for hitting the mic. Let me switch over to my other photo. Yeah, again, um, if you're an amateur artist and you know you ha you have your job and you you have your career, what you're doing, whatever. Um, and you just draw a couple of hours each night or you draw one on the weekends, it's not so important um, about the standing, sitting thing. Really, it, it, it comes into play when you are... Um, the students that I have, they have like a lot of homework for all their different college classes. So some of them are like in front of the computer for like literally like eight, nine hours a day. And not only are they in front of the computer for their... Um, class stuff and their homework, but then afterwards they might watch, if they're in a dorm room, they're watching a Netflix on their computer or they're doing social media on their computer. And if you're sitting and doing that all day, you're really screwed. So you've got to consider spending part of your workday standing. Yep. Sorbai, where are you from? Where, where do you live? That neck is tilted way more than what I have. Darn it. Okay, we're going to just go with it. Okay, so I'm going to do this for a couple more minutes. Anna, just kind of slowly but surely do your thing. And uh, if you draw a little bit each day, you'll get there no problem. But you have to draw with intention. People who draw for years, but they don't have a specific goal for their artwork um, progress much more slowly than if you were to have a specific goal. So your goal could be to draw a realistic figure that is three-dimensional. Or your goal could be to do... Um, kind of loose watercolor paintings, or your goal could be to, to do um, gesture drawings that uh, move. So as long as you're really clear with what you want to get better at, you will get better at it. You just have to write that down specifically with your artwork. Um, really important. For me, the, the thing that's always in my mind is um, likeness. Hey, Nate, thanks for watching. I really appreciate that. 
Um, let me resharpen this. I'm just looking to see where I'm going to go next with this. All right, so um, any other questions before uh, Portugal? Okay, very cool. It must be beautiful there. Um, anybody else have any other questions before we close out this live stream here today? I could keep going. I'm, I'm going to be drawing after. Um, I could keep going here. Uh, this is just a really chill afternoon. I have to do some grading later for school. Hey, Jeanette. I don't know the colors of that flag. I'm sorry. It's so tiny. I can't even really see it. You got it, Ted. Appreciate you watching today. And I would appreciate it if you like what I'm doing and, and I, if you can give this video a thumbs up, that would help me. I'm just a one-man show here. And uh, most teachers online are one-man shows, but not all. There's some people who have teams of people behind them, and that's all good. Uh, so you could help me a lot if you give this video a thumbs up. Um, and if you want to know when I go live, because I'm going to try to go live once a week here on YouTube, uh, just subscribe to my channel and you should get notified. And you could also visit my website. The link is in the description below. Sign up for a free course on how to use white charcoal. And uh, when you sign up for that free course, I will email you when I go live. Um, these live sessions on YouTube are going to be a little bit more sporadic and random but at least you'll get an email from me. Um, so that's better than nothing, really. The Netherlands, cool. Thank you, Andre. I appreciate that, Jay. Hey, Moises. I have um, hundreds of oil paintings. Uh, I'll show you one. It's right behind me. One second, because we're going to close this sucker out. I'll show you an oil painting that I did in 1991 um, that uh, was a portfolio piece. Yeah, one second. Um, I don't know if I'm, how I'm going to be able to show you this. Let me do it this way. So this was an oil painting. Um, I'm going to block myself here. Yeah, an oil painting from uh, many, 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 many moons ago. The date is at the bottom. 1991. I used to sign my name, actually, back in the day. And this was a book cover sample. And uh, photograph the model, photograph the house. I really love that shutter. Um, this was so old. This painting took me like seven days, and it was a blast. And I also liked the chip paint on the top. The birds, that was a mistake, but yeah, you got to learn. Um, so this is what I did for years. That was one of my first book cover samples, very different than what I do now. And we evolve um, as we get older. Um, All right. Well, listen, thank you so much for watching me today. I know it wasn't like this amazing drawing where I'm kind of doing it from scratch, uh, but I've got lots of those on the channel. Maybe look at some of the older live streams if you're new. And uh, I, I would appreciate it if you check out some of the links in the show more part of this video. Uh, I would also appreciate it if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. That would be really, really cool. Um, and I thank you for joining me today. So, Rabbi, thank you so much for joining Zero Bunny. I hope I'm saying that right. Moises, thank you, Moises, for uh, joining me here today. Um, Michael, thank you, Michael. I hope I helped you with the anatomy. Yeah, the birds are really tiny. They kind of look like an afterthought, but I learned. 30-year-old piece, yes. And that um, has been in the sun a lot in a hallway in my house, and it hasn't faded. So I'm pretty impressed. That's on illustration board. Uh, thank you, Anna. I really do appreciate it. You know, it wasn't anything that earth-shattering today. Uh, thanks for sharing your wisdom. Much appreciated. Thank you, Alcides Gomez. Pencil, good vibes. Thank you, Phoenix, for joining. Moises, good to see you again.
And uh, Jethro, thank you. Remco, thank you. Yeah, cool. Sandra, I'll see you, Sandra. I'll post your drawings. Helen, hey, Helen. Yeah, I'm going to try to do this again next Friday or Thursday. One of those days. Okay. Yeah, you got it, David. Appreciate you. Yeah, stay safe, everyone. I'll see you later, okay? Have a great day. Uh, see ya.